doing as Muslims. That's why we said we really need to have this program for you and for me to take a break right here on Huda TV. Stay with us because we've got a lot coming up on Take a Break. that the translation has been indirectly influenced with the Israeli narrative. We haven't faced any problems in our preparations. We can't call it uh, the uh, wise uh, Hajj. In Egypt, you have a huge amount of initiative going on in terms of developing uh, qualifications in different parts of the system. Reading helps you um, gain knowledge, but saving the net doesn't help you at all. They are all uh, welcome to uh, participate in the discussion and the debate about the development of qualifications. What types of books our children do or should read? Join me for further discussion of Focus Point. Huda, a light in every home. It comes to you the truth and the attribute of the one who created you, that he's one and alone running this universe, that he doesn't become born, he doesn't die, he doesn't eat and go to the bathroom. This is not God. The problem here is, yeah. it's, it's, it doesn't make sense. Who was Jesus worshiping? Yeah, because it's recorded in the Gospels. Despite all of the other issues about the Gospels, we put those aside, we just say it's mentioned there that Jesus worshiped God. One who protects us from hunger. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. You're watching Ask Kuda. Quick reminder of our telephone numbers 00202385552428 or 249, or you can write to us at ask, that's ASK, at huda.tv. We have Brother Ahmed from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum, Brother. You're live on Ask Kuda. Assalamu uh, uh, alaikum, both uh, Sheikh Sarah and Sheikh Fuad. Wa I have three Salaam. questions, sir. Okay. okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, one question is, what is Dua Jamila and when is, it, when is it supposed to be recited? Okay? I what, wonder whether you... What is? Uh, where of Dua Jamila. This okay. Is what we heard from... Right, so we want a few more clarification. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Then the other one is while fasting on the 13th and 15th of the lunar month, is there any special dua called dua ayamul bil which is to be recited? Okay. So these are things which we have heard from the outside, so we want a few uh, confirmation. Okay. Then the third question, I'm sorry it's too long, uh, is it okay to pay zakat to people who obviously are committing shirk? Uh, okay. And if you can provide me an answer, because we'll be getting back to our home country where this transmission will not be available. So okay. hope you can answer my question. Okay. Jazakallah khair, Brother Ahmed there from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We also have Brother Hassan also from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum, Brother, you live on Askuda. Assalamu alaikum. Well, Brother Hassan, can you please turn on the volume of our television before asking your question? Okay, okay, okay. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, how are you, brother? Well, I'm fine. I want to talk to the Sheikh Muhammad Salah. Okay. Still, we can hear a feedback, brother Hassan. Can you please turn on the volume? Okay, no problem. Hello, Sheikh. Okay, please go ahead. Go ahead with the question, please, brother Hassan. Okay, Sheikh, I have a friend that he with me so much. He used to help me financially and also uh, he used to lead me wrong way. Okay. So if I stop, uh, stop if, I st if I tell him this, this, this road is wrong, then he starts not talking to me, he's not calling me, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. So if there is any way that or any guy that you will lead me, so I will tell him. I can't say that I want to talk to him. I can't say that I will just cut our friendship between me and him. So okay. you're, you're afraid to talk to him, um, to enjoy what's right or forbid what's evil with him, lest he might stop his financial support, right? Okay. Is this what you mean? No, he is... Father? Uh, you're reluctant to advise him because he supports you financially. 
Yes. Okay, I got the question, Brother Hassan. And Brother Hassan was very... Okay, Jazakallah Khair, Brother Hassan. <coughs> okay. I just reminded to, reminded to the viewers, please turn on the volume of your television set. Brother Hassan was very insistent on, on, on not following that. Um, Sister Um, Habib, uh, um Habiba from the UAE, she wants to know the meaning of Hamazat al-Shaytan. Uh, the word Hamazat al-Shaytan in the verse uh, of Surah uh, Al-Mu'minun, وَقُلْ رَبِّ أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ هَمَزَاتِ الشَّيَاطِينُ وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ رَبِّ أَنْ يَحْضُرُونَ And say, I seek refuge with you, O my Lord, from the Hamazat, the whispers, and the misleading ways of Satan's. Mm -hmm. And I seek refuge with you from their presence at any occasion. So Hamazat al-Shaytan is referring to the waswasa and the ghi of Satan's. Okay, her second question is uh, a long one, but I'll try to summarize what she had to say. She said her husband didn't collect his salary for over a year. He took his employer to court, but uh, however, the lawyers are only presenting what they, she calls lies in the court. And when they try to contact their employer, he's always out of the country. He says, he says however, my husband have, he has all the proof for his claims, but she wants <coughs> your advice in such a situation. Uh, cases like that will be uh, only uh, uh, judged in a court. Because uh, you cannot just uh, get a statement from a sheikh, it would not solve the problem. If you do have right, and uh, those rights are legitimate, and he has approved, he has to continue uh, pursuing the case in, uh, in a court. The word of the sheikh would not exceed an advice or a dua. May Allah support you if the truth is with you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you victorious, and uh, that's it. Okay, we have Brother Muhammad from the United States of America. Assalamu alaikum, brother. You're live on Ask Kodak. Your questions, please. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa alaikum salam. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Yes. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, I have one question. I have one question. Okay. Uh, is there any dua or sunnah after reciting Surah Ghasya and Surah Peen in <coughs> prayer? After reciting? Surah al waqiyah Surah Gatia and Surah Teen. Okay. If we recite these two surahs in the Salah, then is there any dua that we have to say? Okay. Sunnah? Okay. And number two question. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I can explain everything, but I believe Sheikh knows about 401k in USA. We put some money there for our retirement. Okay. But we cannot withdraw the money until we retire. Okay. Retirement uh, plan. Unless there is some serious reason. Okay. Is there a Dhaka to be paid on that too before I retire? Okay. <coughs> okay. Zakhla Khair, Brother Muhammad, from the Kingdom, from the United States of America. Um, Sister Mona from Egypt, she's a graduate in the field of English, also she's qualified in the field of Hadith, and she wants to know ways of improving her skills in giving da'wah to foreigners in English. And the best way, of course, is to speak to people. Communication is very, very important. There are many, many sisters who are new to Islam, uh, who might uh, be in, in need for your help. So if you communicate with them, and if you teach them classes and lessons, that is the best mean of uh, improving your uh, skills, whether in da'wah or in language. I would like to um, tackle the question of the brother from uh, the, the States, because this is an important question to many of the viewers. Okay. And since he's calling online, mm. I would like to tell you with regards to the 401k, there is no zakat due on it unless you collect it. Whether you collect it in advance, I understand that if you decide to collect it in advance, you lose about 30 to 35% of it. So once you collect the money, then it is zakatable once. Then as long as you keep it al along with the rest of your money, investment and saving, <coughs> excuse me, which exceeds, which reaches and exceeds the nisab, then it is zakatable in every single lunar uh, year. So you don't have to pay zakat on it, according to the more right view, as long as you did not collect it nor earn it yet. And inshallah, I'll take the rest of the questions. Okay, um, <coughs> we also have a question here from Sister Um Abdul Rahman from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. She says, if a person, for example, prays the Maghrib Salah with congregation, then after the prayer, someone enters the mosque that is late. She, she says, can the person repeat mm -hmm. the prayer with him? Yeah, well, praying after the Fard is considered as Nafl. So mm -hmm. if there is a Jama'ah and you intend to pray, unless if it was a prayer that you missed before and you want to make it up according to one of the views, 
some people like to make up the prayers which they missed even before uh, the age of puberty. It's perfectly fine. So it counts as a far that you messed up and you're make, you missed and you're making it up. Mm. But if there is uh, uh, somebody who uh, entered late and he requested from you to pray with him in order to get the word of jama'ah, your prayer is nafl because you already f- uh, offered uh, your fard and that is permissible. You can also as well lead him in the prayer by praying the two rak'ahs mm-hmm. of Sunnah al-Maghrib for instance. So that's your nafl and he will be praying behind you the fard according to the vast majority that is permissible. According to Hanafi, it is not permissible to build the weaker on the stronger. Mm-hmm. So he, uh, the stronger on the weaker. So according to Hanafi madhab, he considered the nafl is weaker than uh, the fard. Mm-hmm. And by analogy, according to the same madhab, it is not permissible to pray behind, if you're having wudu, it is not permissible to pray behind an imam who are having uh, tayammum. Okay, if you can quickly uh, just shed some light back on Sister Lila's question. At the very end, before she left, she said that she wants to know who really is responsible because she said when she sent that email, the, 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 the Dawah organization sent her that she should make tawbah for, and, she, and they hold her responsible for her uh, I, uh, I, I do have a long comment on how the behavior of uh, many of uh, Muslims in, in the West, mm-hmm. where many of them, they claim that they are practicing the deen and they dissolve. Mm-hmm. So we see wonders, we see amazing things that have been introduced to the deen mm-hmm. that doesn't belong to it, like Islamic crap, Islamic rock and roll, mm-hmm. things like that. I don't know where does it fit in the Sharia and how people were able to, to, to consider it as permissible. They say we have to offer a halal alternative to uh, mm-hmm. our children, to our youth in order to attract them. So... Uh, Many, many, many examples like that. Bottom line, in this particular uh, occasion, perhaps, inshallah, we will have either in the straight path or let's talk. We have serious programs on Muslims in the West and many things where people belittle. What I call it is ilful ma'asiyah. Mm-hmm. Ilful ma'asiyah, one of the two main ailments that Muslims face in the West, ilful ni'mah or ilful ma'asiyah. Getting used to luxury and getting used to sins. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily because I'm practicing sins, but I see people everywhere around me practicing it. So I say, you know, I just go with the flow. Mm-hmm. So what I say is, in this particular incident, Sister Layla from Belgium, if the sisters were aware of the presence of this man and they continued, they are to be blamed as well. Same like the man, same like the organizers. I do not free the organizers from the blame from the beginning because putting a man in the ladies area or section even with the excuse of adjusting the volume or maintaining the equipment is not permissible. You know that they are they're, they're singing or chatting or taking off their veils because they believe that they are in a secure place and only women uh, are around. So in these conditions, the organizers are definitely responsible. Uh, beware, I'm only giving the fatwa or the opinion based on the presented question. So, if they insisted there is no problem for a man to be amongst women while they're singing and dancing, they are definitely to be blamed. They're blameworthy and they are responsible. Sisters who knew that there is a man and they still resume, they are also responsible. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pardon us and forgive us our sins. I mean, we also have Brother Sadiq from Greece here. He asking about a sister who is going to marry. She accepted Islam, mashallah. Her name is Sister her name is Anne Maria, but she, he wants to know if she has to change her father name when she accepts Islam. No, as a matter of fact, Islam orders us, even after marriage, that the wife should maintain her father's name, not the name of her husband. Mm-hmm. Uh, till today, in the most modern and civilized world, in, uh, in, in Europe and in America, if a woman gets married, she totally neglects her family's name her father's name, mm. and then she adopts the name of her husband. It is the woman's right to maintain her name, the name of her father, the one who is the main reason for her existence. What if this woman is divorced? Okay, back to the name of your father, or your ex-husband, or whatever, or looking for another last name. Mm. You must call them after their fathers, whether boys or or girls. So we ask the sister to keep the last name 
for family or her father's name. Okay, his second question, he says, if someone goes under in an operation and um, the operation is a result that he can't maintain himself to be pure for prayers, um, what does he do in, in such a case? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ So whatever he commanded us to do, we must fulfill, but as much as we can. If somebody is sick and he's having this chronic ailment where he is on a machine that he doesn't have an execution system, the rectum is removed. So he has an external bag. So in this condition, he will be making wudu for every prayer uh, because he cannot control his defecation. Mm -hmm. He cannot control his defecation. For every prayer, he will make wudu after the adhan and pray the current prayer. He says he's from Bangladesh and he says from his very boyhood he learned that uh, to say the intention for the prayer in his language called Bangla. Mm -hmm. But he said that he learned that this is bid'ah. He it wants is to know. not permissible to utter the intention. Why is it called intention then? Intention because it is something that is deep in the heart. To express it that's between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only intention which would not be pronounced as an intention but as a ceremony which is a talbiya. When you say لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ either umratan or hajjan or umratan mutamatti'an biha ila al-hajj. But other than that you don't say I intend to fast or I intend to pray or I intend لَبَّيْك is the only talbiya uh, which will be pronounced or uttered. Other than that, النِّيَّةُ مَحَلُّهَا القلب. You should intend by your heart, not by your tongue. Okay, Brother Abu Bakr from the United States, he says he has a problem and he wants your advice. His wife has not been feeling well. And she says he said she suffers from severe headaches, that she feels that her head is open and she has nightmares and so forth. And he's afraid that this might affect her pregnancy because she's pregnant. He wants your advice. Uh, as I always advise, you need to uh, uh, check on her medically. Uh, visit uh, uh, various clinics in order to determine the cause of the disease or whether it's migraine or just uh, simply headache because she's pregnant or dehydrated or, or, or physicians will be able to determine by the leave of Allah better. What if they say you're perfectly fine? Then we also consider the evil eye, the hasad and as sihr And uh, the best way to take it in parallel tracks uh, we all suffer things like that. Even Shaykh, even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So recite Surah Al-Baqarah, the entire Surah, Surah Al-Baqarah in one sitting if you can. Uh, if she can, recite it before her. Sit both of you and recite Surah Al-Baqarah. And uh, recite the Ruqya on her. Place your right palm on her forehead or the, 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 the pain uh, spot. And recite Al Mu'awwidat, the three surahs, Qul Hu Allahu Ahad, and Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Falaq, and Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Nas, three times. You can also blow after reciting each uh, set of three times, and you wipe over her head. Um, uh, recite Ayatul Kursi and ask her to recite Ayatul Kursi. There is a beautiful dua that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said if you visit a sick person and you say this dua seven times in his presence, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not destine him to die in this uh, uh, sickness, then he would be cured. Which is, أَسْأَلُ اللَّهَ الْعَظِيمُ رَبَّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمُ أَنْ يَشْفِيَ كِي For a feminine, أَنْ يَشْفِيَ كَا For masculine. So say, I ask Allah the Great, the, the Lord of the Great Throne to cure you, to give you a quick recovery. And uh, we join hands and we ask the viewers to say, Ameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure your wife and give her safe pregnancy and delivery. نسأل الله العظيم رب العرش العظيم أن يشفيها. Amen. Amen. Brother Saleh from Switzerland, he wants to know the tasbih or the sibh for counting. Is it permissible? It is permissible, but it is recommended to count the tasbih on your finger joints. Why? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us while he was addressing a group of women mm -hmm. that اَعْقِدْنَا بِالْأَنَامِلِ فَإِنَّهُنَّ مُسْتَنْطَقَاتِ This is a beautiful hadith. When you know that, on the day of judgment, your finger joints will be able to speak up on the day of judgment and say that we used to make tasbih. He used to count the tasbih, the dhikr, the remembrance of Allah on us. So this is as a mean of intercision. So of course, obviously, this is better than the beads. I said better. And according to the more right view, 
the tasbih is not prohibited. When does it become prohibited to hold the beads or the tasbih? When um, it is taken as a mean of showing off. There is a very funny invention Mm -hmm. which I have seen uh, uh, recently where people go for Hajj and Umrah and they buy, uh, which is a uh, tasbihometer, mm-hmm. where they keep counting. And they make noise where everybody is sitting. It is very, very annoying. What are you afraid of? To lose count? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not lose count. You're sitting in the haram between the prayers. Make as much tasbih and takbir and tahleel. The most beloved words to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alhamdulillah, wallahu akbar. Say hundreds of times. Thousands of times, millions of times. Why do we have to keep record? Uh, if you're afraid of forgetfulness, Allah does not forget. So with regards to the holding the tasbih, sometimes it's a reminder. People hold it in their hands. So as long as they're walking or whatever, it reminds them and it reminds those who are in their presence to keep themselves or their tongues busy with the remembrance of Allah. So if, if it is with this intention, there is no problem with that. Wallahu a'lam. Okay, unfortunately, we're out of time to end the show. Dr. Muhammad, jazakallah khair for being with us. Wa jazakum. Just a quick reminder for those who didn't get to ask their question, you can always ask it at by sending that email at ask at huda.tv. And don't forget, you can support us here at Huda TV by just sending that email to support at huda.tv. And don't forget to visit our website, www.huda.tv. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If my love is attached to thee, then from sins I will be free. Each time my heart will beat, your name will resound with heat. Allah is my heart's speech, your mercy is what I beseech. Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your deen allow me to advance. Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Help me in my 